Hi, I'm Nigel, developer of Audisif, and in this video I show you how to configure the mixer mode inside Bitwig Studio. Bitwig Studio is supported in Audisif from version 2.3 and up. You can check your current version in Audisif Preferences About. If you need to update, go to Audisif and click Check for Updates. Launch Audisif before launching Bitwig Studio. Go to Preferences and then click the Mixer tab. AudioSwift creates three virtual MIDI ports. In Mixer mode, AudioSwift 1 is used for your primary DAW. AudioSwift 2 is for your secondary DAW in case you work with another one. AudioSwift 3 is only used with the rest of the controller modes. In this case, we are only working with Bitwig Studio, so we are going to select it as our primary DAW on port 1. Close the window. We need to tell Bitwig that we want to use AudioSwift as a control surface. AudioSwift uses the Mackie Control Protocol or MCU to communicate with the DAW. Bitwig supports this protocol natively, but it has some limitations. Instead, we are going to use a third party extension script made by this developer. It adds a better support for controllers working with MCU. Go to this website. I put the link in the description section below and download the latest version of the script driven by Moss. Open the file. In Finder, open a new Finder window and press Command Shift G. Copy this address. I put the text in the description section below. Click Go. Move the file driven by Moss.pw extension to the extensions folder. Close both windows. Now launch Bitwig Studio and go to the dashboard. Click Settings, Controllers, and add a new controller. You can see in the bottom left that the Driven by Moss script was loaded successfully. Under Hardware Vendor, look for Mackie, then choose MCU Control Universal without the extenders. Click for the MIDI input, select AudioSwift 1 if Bitwig Studio is going to be your primary DAW or otherwise select AudioSwift 2. For the MIDI output, repeat the same MIDI port. A list of settings appears. Go down to the workflow section and under select channel on feather touch, choose off. Close the dashboard. Everything is set up. In Bitwig, let's choose the mix panel layout by pressing tab. Now go to AudioSwift and let's open the console and the trackpad windows. I'm going to click the star so the console window will always be on top. Make sure you're on mixer mode. At the bottom bar, there is a menu where you select the current DAW that you want to control. There are the same two DAWs that you set before at the preferences window and you can switch between them. The middle area shows the current view you are working on, with the group of parameters you can control with the trackpad. In this case, I am the first view, and I can control one fader plus the solo, mute, and arm record button. Select the first track in your project. Turn on the console with a four fingers tap. Select view one by tapping the number one. To move the fader of the selected track, use the tip of one finger and slide it up or down inside the fader area. The corresponding fader will move on screen. Notice that the movements are relative, meaning that it doesn't matter if you begin at the bottom of the trackpad or at the top level, the fader will start moving from its last position following your finger direction. Also notice that once you start moving inside the fader zone, you won't need to worry if you accidentally get out of the zone the selected fader will still move. When you finish, press the escape key or double tap the bottom right corner of your trackpad. It's a good practice to turn off the console right away when you finish using the controller to avoid moving a fader when you really want to move the mouse pointer instead. Let's turn on the console again. If you press the option key in your keyboard when moving the fader, it will reset to its default value of 0 dB. 
if you keep pressed the command key, the fader will move more slowly for fine tuning. You can also change the sensitivity of the fader by going to preferences, mixer tab, and move this slider horizontally. To solo the track, tap with one finger over the letter S. To mute the track, tap over the M. To arm for record the track, tap over the R. To control the next track, tap over the left and right triangles. If you need to do a big jump to another track, you have two options. By tapping over the triangles while pressing the control key, it will move the first track to the next A channels bank. Bitwig will show you it moved the bank. The second option is by turning off Audio Swift, scroll with your trackpad to the desired track and select it. Turn on the console again and start moving the fader. Let's see another views. Turn on the console and tap over view number 2. You now have access to the fader plus the pan. Move up your finger inside the pan zone and the knob will turn to the right. Move down and it will turn to the left. Keep pressing the option key and move the pan. It will go to the center. Now tap over the number 3. View 3 lets you move two tracks at the same time. I tend to use my index and ring fingers for this. Tap over the left and right triangles and it will jump to the next two tracks. Press the option key while moving your fingers and the faders will be set at 0 dB. Press the command key for fine tuning. I have shown you the first three basic views in mixer mode. There are two more. View 5 is for the master fader and view 6 for the jog wheel. View 4 for the sense is not supported in Bigwood Studio. They are all accessible by using one finger tap over the bottom right area of the trackpad. But before we need to enable them at the preferences window, mixer tap. Here you enable only the views you want to use. I'm going to check the master fader and the jog wheel. Close the window. Turn on the console with the four fingers tap. Tap only once over the bottom right area where the star is and you'll select the first view you enable in the preferences window. Tap again and it will switch to the next one. Remember that if you do a quick double tap in this area, instead of changing the view, you'll turn off the console. Tap over the bottom right zone again to switch to the master fader view. This controls directly the master fader. Press the option key and it will move to 0 dB. Tap one more time the bottom right and you'll change to the jog wheel. With only one finger, start moving in circles around the center of the trackpad. The playhead will move through the timeline. It's time to talk about the transport controls. In AudioSwift, there are several keyboard shortcuts that are used for transport control when the console is on or when the console is the key window on screen. You can either use them or if you prefer, you can use the regular transport shortcuts in your DAW and then turn on the console for controlling the faders, panning, and so on. Like in your DAW, to play the music, use the spacebar. Press it again and the playhead will stop. The letters from Q to Y in your keyboard are for the rest of transport controls. Q is for rewind. W is the stop button. E is another play button. The R is the record button. T is for enable the cycle mode and Y is fast forward. If you have a MacBook Pro with touch bar, you will also see the transport controls display on it. It's good to mention that once you have configured the mixer mode in your DAW, both touch bar and keyboard transport controls are also accessible when you are working on the trigger, scale, X, Y, and slider modes. That's all for this tutorial. Please watch the rest of videos on how to use AudioSift in other controller modes. Thanks for watching.